Good morning, everybody. My name is Maraid, and I am a member of Workers' World Party in Boston. As we move deeper into our conference on decolonization and the fight against imperialism, it is crucial that our allies from Latin America take part in the conversation. Nicaragua has a profound century plus long history of successfully pushing back Western imperialism and US interventions. From military invasion to bloody US backed dictatorship to coup attempts and criminal sanctions to this day, the people of Nicaragua have heroically stood strong in resisting these attacks on their sovereignty and defending their right by any and all means and the right of those around the world, including in Palestine, to determine their own just path without the boot of imperialism on their necks. This July, Nicaragua will be celebrating 45 years since the victory of the Sandinista Revolution. which continuously exemplifies its people-centered revolutionary process through access to free quality education and healthcare, prioritizing nutrition, clean energy and water, social programs for vulnerable communities, dignity for elders, gender equality, respect for workers and organized labor, protection of the environment, improved quality infrastructure across the country, and constant new victories for the people. Siempre más allá. We call for self-determination for Latin America and all nations of the Global South. U.S. hands off Nicaragua. So, it is my sincere honor to welcome to the podium Nicaraguan Ambassador Lautaro Sandino, Head of Mission at the Nicaraguan Embassy in Washington, D.C. We are so glad that you are here. Viva la Revolución Sandinista and long live the solidarity between our peoples as we unite in our shared struggle against imperialist hegemony and the war against our class. So please give Ambassador Sandino a warm, warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope that my English is well enough. Uh, I prepared a speech and I found out that the translation that I did, it was absolutely wrong. <laughs> that is the problem when you put your word in Spanish and then you try to transmit to another language. But anyway, I will do my best. I want to tell you a little story. When I was 22 years old, it's 41 years ago, I came to the United States for the first time in my life. There was a tour that was organized but by many organizations here. And I visited 51 cities of the United States in two months. So I have a dear feeling about the people of the United States. And when I was coming here, I was thinking in Tomás Borges, commander of the revolution that said, that solidarity is the tenderness of people. And I am able to feel that here. Thank you so much for your support.
I want to give you on behalf of President Ortega and Vice President Rosario Murillo the warmest uh, salutation, salute, hi, wish you well. But this is not a rhetorical thing to say for the, a diplomat like me. When we say on behalf of our president and our vice president, it is a reality. She knows or they know that I am here and, that know, and they know that I am speaking to you, explaining the good things that we have been doing in Nicaragua in order to give a restitution of rights. In Nicaragua, we don't want to say that we have achievements. We are not saying that the government is giving the people things. We are restitution, the rights of the people to have a better life. That's the point. That's the whole point. That's the whole idea that we have. So it is not because the, pe the government is nice. It's our good government, as we like to say. But our government is restituting the rights of the Nicaraguan people. And so far, we have been doing well. We have universal, a free health care throughout the country. We built about 24 new hospitals. We have created a house for maternity in order to lower the mother death. We have universal education. From preschool to university, we are creating labor uh, center of education, technical uh, centers, and so on. The economy of Nicaragua has been doing well, very well. And we have been consistently uh, having a growth of about four, five, uh, percent every year. Even the attempt of coup d'etat that we have in 2008 and the COVID pandemic, uh, we are recuperating. We are recuperating. We are doing it so well. Did you know that Nicaragua is ranked in the seventh place of gender equality? Seventh place. <laughs> By law, 50% of all the public elected representatives must be women. That's very nice. And you know about this? It is interesting to, when people say or tell us, why you say president and vice president? It's a couple. It's a gender. In our idea and in the new thinking, we have to work together, men and women. So the decision has to be taken by men and women in equality, not in a different way. And when women, women take the lead, it is better. <laughs> that is a fact. What can I say? Another story, when my mother takes decisions, they are very good ones. When my father did, it was terrible. So, also, we have been developing renewable energy very well. We have been working with that. We even have the guts to denounce at the beginning the Paris Agreement, because it was not good enough. We did it. Okay? Now about 40, we have 90.4% of electricity coverage in the country. That is remarkable. And we have been working with renewable energy. Our government has been given house for people. We have improving the roads and so on. 
And we can talk about many things that my government is doing in favor of the Nicaraguan people. And all this explain why our government, our government, according to the polls, had about 83% of support in the policies. Even though in the international media, they said that we are doing wrong. But you know about the, the, the uh, corporate media, I believe that you call it. But anyway, see, the thing is that in Nicaragua, we have been building a new society, and you are helping us of doing it in one way that it is important for our people. There, was, there is an organization in Latin America, in the Americas, as you might know. We don't recognize them. We denounce them. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. And we will continue. Like that. I want to express our solidarity with the people that are fighting for the independence, sovereignty, national dignity. Our solidarity is with Venezuela, with Cuba, with the people of Puerto Rico, with our brother from the Polisario Front, and of course with the Patriot and revolutionaries of Africa that are fighting against colonialism. That is part of our idea. In December last year, there was a high-level policy consultative conference about the situation in Palestine. And I want to read you what my government said about it. Okay, in that conference. He said, we clearly say and will continue to express our fraternal and militant solidarity with the Palestinian people and their cause. Humanity continues to be outraged and stunned by the inhumane aggression, genocide, and serious war crimes committed by the Zionist state against the people of Palestine and Gaza and the West Bank. But my, my government goes even, goes even further. We said that the government of Israel is turning itself into an state incompatible with the community of states that makes up the United Nations. Their supremacy criminally is unparalleled in human story. It's what we say, it's what we live. As you know, South Africa sued Palestine before the International Court of Justice. Nicaragua went, we were one of the first to go to explain our position, supporting the zoo of, of South Africa. We believe that is brave in our experience. We sued the United States, 1984. <laughs> <laughs> and we won. That was the best part. They never pay, anyway. <laughs> but now we have to Germany. And I believe that we are thinking in, in the Netherlands, Canada, that might be the next, okay. And some people said, hey, why are you are suing Germany and not the Israel? You know, in our thinking, nor United States or Israel will follow 
the decision of the International Court of Justice. They don't recognize it. There is no jurisdiction. But guess what? Germany does. <laughs> so we are saying, look, you are not fulfilling your duty to preserve somebody to kill and uh, to commit a uh, genocide. That's why we are suing Germany. That is our position. Okay? So, what we do now, keep going, resist, mobilize, mobilize. That, that is the whole idea, I believe. Mobilize, keep doing it. Don't get tired. And when you get tired, do it again. It's the way. You know, another story. When you get old, you like to tell story. <laughs> there, there, there is a book of a commander of the Sandinista revolution that is called uh, Omar Cabezas. He was a guerrilla fighter, okay? So he was very young, he went to the mountains, and he said that another hero of the revolution said that the new man was in the plus effort. And he, he said that in his book. So all of us read it all the time. So I was mobilized, and I went to the mountains, and it was very hard. It was very hard. And I remember uh, Omar Cabeza's book. So I, if I wanted to be the new man or women, I had to put a plus effort in order to achieve what I want. We want to be a new man, and if we want to have a new Palestine and a free Palestine, we have to keep going. Never stop. But anyway, uh, I think that this is the thing that I wanted to, to share with you. But before I conclude, I want to, to read. Uh, a quote from Che Guevara that we should remember always. Above all, always be able to feel in the depth of any injustice committed against anyone in any, in any part of the world. That is the most beautiful quality of a revolutionary. Keep that in mind. Courage. The truth is ours and the victory is certain. Patria Libre o Morir, thank you very much. <laughs>